Hello tech friends. Today I'm going to very gently pull this into frame here. This is a little old keyboard from an old laptop from an old Toshiba 1910 and this video is about how you take a keyboard that's in an old laptop like this and turn it into a USB keyboard. Now why on earth would you want to do such a thing? And if you ask that question on the internet, well, let me tell you, most people think that's a really stupid idea because anything you do to an old keyboard in a laptop um, could easily be replicated with a, a brand new keyboard because they're so cheap, you know, they only cost you about five pounds or whatever. Um, so this really is over-engineering a solution for something. I'll tell you why I'm doing it. I've got the original laptop that this came from and it's currently in uh, bits. I've got the screen and things like that. The keyboard would sit in this section here. And what I want to do is take this old key, uh, this old laptop, which is from about 1993, 94, something like that, and turn it into a Raspberry Pi laptop with a new screen. I have got the screen elsewhere. Um, and, you know, change all the innards and things. So you've got a Raspberry Pi in there and a few other things. So that's the sort of longer term project. And the first step to achieving that is getting your old keyboard to work. Now, um, yes, as I say, if you look things up on the internet, people are generally of the opinion that that's a very stupid thing to do. <laughs> but hey, what a challenge, right? I mean, the actual keyboard part is just up to this ribbon bit here, and this extra section that I've got here is what I'll be talking about, really. Um, and what I've done is I've followed the instructions from this website here in the Instructables uh, website, which has been written by Frank Adams, how to make a USB laptop keyboard controller. Now, this is quite a long guide. Um, and the main reason for that is, is he goes into quite a lot of detail about all the different kinds of keyboards that you might encounter um, and how to uh, fix them up um, and get them wired up so that they work with a USB uh, out. Um, and this video at the top, this is a seven minute video, is a pretty good introduction to the whole process from end to end. Um, but I'll just sort of go over how it generally works. Okay, so what you need is for the inputs that you press on the keyboard, which are kind of like row and column latches, um, you need to be able to interpret those into the equivalent letter and fire that letter into whatever device you're actually connected to, like a computer, Raspberry Pi or, or something like that, right? Um, and so there's two stages to that, really. There's the interpretation stage, where you try and understand what all these buttons are connected to in terms of their row and column. So then you end up with a bunch of numbers. And then you uh, take all of those numbers and you put them into a uh, script that goes on to this little device um, and then it interprets it as keyboard presses and fires that into USB. So there's kind of like two stages to it. Right, so let's take a closer look at this. Um, this is a circuit board that's connected the ribbon cable is part of the keyboard itself and this feeds into this connection here and then on top of it we've got this teensy which is like an arduino um, and you can code it like an arduino and uh, it is very fast and very small and very uh, low powered and perfect for this for this job okay now um every laptop keyboard you've got is going to have a slightly different set of connecting uh, pins here along the ribbon cable and so you might have this one's only got about 18 because it's such an old keyboard but if you've got a trackpad or um, uh, a little mouse nub built into the keyboard then you'll probably have a few more um, and if it's a larger keyboard with a numeric keypad that's separate then you'll probably have a few more as well but I've managed to get away with only about 18 so this connector here goes from number 1 to 26 but on the other side um, you can just about see it goes to 1 to 34 so it can accommodate larger ones. So I got these circuit boards created um, and sent to me. I ended up with about three or four different ones because I think I probably sent the entire file rather than the specific one that I needed. Um, and then I had to also purchase this thing here which is called an FPC connector 
Um, and then I had to solder this on <laughs> to the board itself. And this was probably the worst part of the process. So you might be able to just see there that my soldering is terrible. And I've actually managed to uh, fuse together rows one to four, I think it is there. So essentially um, those are duff, but because this is such a short ribbon, I was able to push it on and basically tell the teensy ignore the first five rows and you're looking at rows five to 26 instead. So I managed to get away with that, but uh, if you've got a larger one, it's just very delicate to, to do the soldering. But you can do it, just got to take your time with it. And then up here, this is the teensy itself. And essentially what you've got here is all these pins that represent either a row or a column um, are connected individually to these individual pins. And for the ones that I messed up down here, I didn't even bother connecting them um, to this. So once you've wired everything up, um, you need to load up this, which is called the matrix decoder. And my version is um, LC. There are a few different versions available through links on that Instructables page. And if you load this script into the Teensy and run it, you are in sort of like, I don't know, detective mode, where it's it's gonna take those button presses that you make and it's gonna record them as numbers, as rows and columns. And on the website, there's another link which provides a notepad file, you know, just a regular text file, which looks like this, which has got all of the keys on the left-hand side. And as you press the buttons on the keyboard, if you've wired everything up correctly, it will record the row and column for each of the buttons that you press. So you work through every single one of these. Um, and if I just show you the other file when it's complete, uh, we've got ones with the numbers already written in and that's what it detected as I was pressing the buttons. Um, and so you need this, you're gonna need this file. So um, you've got to record all this stuff. And what this actually showed me was that some of the buttons weren't actually wired up correctly, or rather my soldering was so poor I, I'd actually bridged other connections. But um, through a process of elimination, I could tell that say, for instance, or oh, I never see anything from number 19, for instance. Um, and that means that the 19th pin isn't working correctly. So I had to resolder a few bits there. So once you've got your text file with all your numbers in it, then you need to have your uh, a, a Python script to run to convert all those numbers into actual pins on the Teensy because it isn't quite lined up correctly. So we run that and this is the file um, that we are investigating. And essentially this is the output. So if I scroll up to the top, it tells me that as far as the Teensy is concerned, it's got eight input pins, 11 output pins. So there's sort of, you know, row and columns, that's the equivalent of those. And then it's telling me what all of the buttons that I saved in there, what they map to. So for instance, the letter A it, with this one over here is mapped to row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then column one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's eight and eight. Um, in terms of this sort of grid, but that's the equivalent of row 23 and uh, column 16. So it, it, you, there's a bit of interpretation essentially <laughs> that you need to do here. Um, but this information um, needs to then go into another script, um, a bit of code here, which is the actual code that is gonna be loaded into the Teensy and it's gonna interpret the key presses. The button presses that you've got here are all code words for those keys on a keyboard. So by clicking on that link, you end up here, the Teensy Duino um, website, and that will tell us uh, what the actual individual keys are called. So they're called key underscore ESC. It's not just the equivalent of actually just pressing A, they're all code words. And so you have to populate those into the code that you've got that you're gonna load into your Arduino um, and load it up and then it actually works. But sometimes they're not quite mapped correctly and you press a button and it hasn't quite recorded it correctly. So you have to go back and potentially adjust one of the letters if it's not quite in the right place. And finally, let's show it actually working. So I've plugged in a USB cable here into the computer um, and just looking at notepad on here, here it is. Um, when I first saw those letters appear, it was quite 
um, an exciting moment that I'd actually wired it up correctly and I followed all the instructions it had worked. So what I would say is it is possible and I think you can do something very cool with it. And it's interesting to understand just how this whole technology works. Um, so there we go. Uh, I'll show some more of this entire build in later videos. Um, but this is one of the first steps and I've managed to successfully connect this to a Raspberry Pi um, and so it's going to definitely work. It's now just a case of assembling a few things together. So there you are. Why not have a go yourself? Thanks for watching.